Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Lisa, Jared, Scott here today. Last week of September mm, yeah, is September 25th. Crazy. We'll get to our, well, the 10 day goes into October and it, it does, does not feel like the end of September. <laughs> but before we jump into those news and weather headlines, I want to remind you real quick, of course, we're live on Facebook every weekday morning. You know that. We love it when you join us. We make this into a podcast when we're done. You can find that at inform.com slash podcast. Just look for the Inform Minute or you can find us on our Inform YouTube channel or live, the easiest way, every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on WDAY. Yeah, Jared, over the weekend, quite a few people got some rain. Still mm -hmm. kind of hanging around today or is it uh, yeah. getting out of here? Uh, it, it's for the most part out of here, but there might be a few of us that just see a, a quick little shower or two out mm -hmm. there. It's not going to be much. Um, I think best shot will be over northern Minnesota. This may see a few of those showers, but I don't think it's going to impact very many people at all. But this morning we were tracking fog. fog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it's still pretty foggy over eastern parts of North Dakota, down through parts of like Wahpeton, although that kind of peaked here for a little bit. Now it mm -hmm. looks like it's improving already. Okay. And then there's some fog down near like Fergus Falls. So some of those main highways out there you'll be running into. I just looked at the DOT in Jamestown. Looks pretty foggy out there mm. and parts of Valley City too. So pretty dependent on where you're at. Others are just having kind of a cool, cloudy morning. And I think today will actually be one of our coldest days. Okay. That's for the crazy. Forecast. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> temps are on the rise for the rest of the week. We could hit All close right. to 80 on Thursday. Wow. Although I think it's going to be kind of a blustery one. So oh. if, you don't, if you don't mind the wind, I think it'll hit, hit <laughs> close to 80. But okay. yeah. All right. Not kind of sums bad. it up, yeah. Okay. yeah nice. Pretty warm temperatures. I think we'll have some 70s over this weekend. If you're going to be joining in the festivities for homecoming or, or whatnot, mm -hmm. looking for that. Is perfect... there? There's a chance again for some rain. Yeah, yeah. We're tracking a front to move through sometime Friday, Saturday. So there might be a couple interruptions out there, but mm -hmm. I don't see it like the rain which some folks had just steady, you know, right. throughout parts of the weekend. weekend. It's not going to be like that. So just may have to just watch the radar come Friday and Saturday, and then I think it'll be pretty good. Most of that time frame, I think will be dry. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's only Monday. Day. We don't have to cancel, you know, tailgating yeah. for homecoming. Yeah. Or anything and that's like what that. our whole, that's what our <laughs> whole, the whole Storm Tracker team will be watching here this week because otherwise there's not much happening throughout our midweek forecast. We've got some winds, okay. some warming temperatures, but we'll watch that and how we'll finish out and head into the end of the weekend. All Sounds right. great. Thank you, Jared. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right, well, we're also tracking a breaking story. We broke this on First News for you mm -hmm. this morning. A multi car crash caused more than a, a mile of the interstate to be shut down for several hours overnight. It happened on I 94 near Cheyenne Street in West Fargo. Uh, it did reopen this morning. Uh, according to the North Dakota Highway Patrol, four cars were involved in this crash. Uh, troopers tell us it started as a rear end crash that left two cars actually in the opposite lane of traffic. So that's pretty scary. One of those cars was actually hit by an oncoming vehicle. Uh, we also know right now that the driver that rear ended the first car is facing charges for driving under the influence and also is in serious condition this morning. Three others were also taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Of course, we're going to continue tracking this story for you and try to get some more updates since all of this, the investigation, the crash and everything mm -hmm. really happened overnight yeah. uh, when it was dark. So we'll get you an update throughout the day. Today, several restaurants at the West Acres Mall are expected to reopen after a water pressure issue forced them to close over the weekend. Um, actually, a member of our news team was at the mall when this all kind of happened. It happened around uh, noon yesterday. The restaurant shut down. Uh, then West Acres posted a Facebook saying there was also a discol discoloration in the water. So uh, reportedly, they've gotten that all solved at this yeah, point. Yeah, it was the food court and Crave. So, yeah. you know, there's more than just the food court in the mm -hmm. mall. So kind of a mess for a couple of hours. Uh, this is a big story right now. Governor Doug Burgum says he's ready for the next GOP debate, and he plans to take the stage this week. It's happening Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, he took to social media with the announcement saying that new polling data showed him meeting the requirement for that second debate. He now has numbers just over 3%. Former President Donald Trump is still the front runner, of course, in the polls, but once again, not expected to show up to the debate again. Uh, you can watch that debate eight o'clock Wednesday night. It's being held in California, of course. We will have a complete uh, recap with the highlights for mm -hmm. you on our news that night at 10, and then again, Thursday morning on First News. That's right. Today, we are expecting to hear from North Dakota State University about their decision to cut an administration role. Uh, the move has sparked some backlash and a protest is now planned on campus for this week, we told you about this story uh, last week, kind of uh, dove into it a little bit more, but NDSU announced last week that uh, Dr. Zanin Billingreen will no longer be the Vice Provost for Faculty Affairs and Equity, and that the role would actually be dissolved. Uh, now, WDAY did some digging into public documents and found that a discrimination case over departmental leave, what, which Billingreen was actually overseeing, led to this move. 
Uh, some faculty members there believe the move has to do with the presence of women in administrative roles. Um, and some of those people from that same group plus others are planning to protest that issue tomorrow on campus. Um, the university then, a representative from the university, I should say, told WDAY that they plan to comment further on these concerns and regarding that decision today. So once we hear from them, we'll of course pass that along to you. Today is the final day of the fall, fall parade of homes. Maybe you didn't go over the weekend since it was so rainy, but uh, there are 36 homes you can still take a tour of on the route today. The prices of those houses have a wide range, but some go up all the way to $2.4 million. Uh, you can tour those open houses starting at noon, noon to eight. The homes are all over the FM area, but also in Castleton, Horace, Colfax, and Mapleton. Admission is free to most homes, but if you go to one of the those top three, like the $2.4 yeah. million dollar home, they're asking for a $5 donation yeah. uh, to go into those homes, but fun to, to go in and dream. Mm -hmm. Or maybe cool. get some inspiration. Cool to see what they do with those houses. Absolutely. And they're unique and obviously very nice. All right, today kicks off a big week in Fargo, NDSU homecoming week, of course. Gonna be packed with full, full of fun activities for students and alumni. Fun starts at one o'clock this afternoon with an ice cream social and pep fest near the Memorial Union. Tomorrow's theme is giving back with the campus wide cleanup event and serve the herd volunteer opportunities. On Wednesday, you, you can create your own pennant and then test your knowledge at Bison Trivia Night. There will be a blood drive on Thursday ahead of the Blue Key Homecoming Show and Coronation. The main event will main events will be on Friday, Bison Bash, Homecoming Parade, Blacklight Dodgeball, much more going on. Of course, wouldn't be complete without a big football game at the end of the week. Bison play the Coyotes, the University of South Dakota, on Saturday. So lots of fun stuff going on this week. With that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is another story that we were broke for you on First News this morning. A big mm -hmm. story. You're going to hear a lot about it today. The Writers Guild of America and major Hollywood studios have reached a tentative deal, maybe ending that months-long strike. The WGA made the announcement in an email to its more than 11,000 members overnight. As you know, we've been following this for you. They've been on strike since May 2nd, yeah, the second wow. longest in the union's history. Uh, people, we, we notice it now because shows are on rerun yeah. and uh, no, no new stuff. Um, the contract still needs to be ratified by the union's members. This is interesting today. They say while they are still on strike, they will suspend picketing. So no picketing, that's right. No picketing yesterday, mm -hmm. today. But the Guild is right now still urging its members to join the picket lines for the actors strike. So that is still yeah. ongoing. Mm -hmm. And the auto workers strike is also ongoing. So That's true too. still things to talk about there for sure. Uh, hot mic today, the Vikings and Gophers had a weekend to forget <laughs> how each of the Minnesota teams squandered wins this weekend. Plus the twins win a division title and the Bison returned to work this week. Lots to catch up on from the busy sports weekend. Hot Mike is live from 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra and Inform.com. Do you think, Dom, we'll talk about the biggest story of the the weekend? Is that the Taylor Swift <laughs> sighting Taylor at Arrowhead Swift Stadium? Taylor Swift was watching Travis Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He I, might. He I don't might. know. Maybe. It's, it's got, a lot really, of, got a lot of traction right now. It did. It's not really entertainment news. <laughs> not really his jam, but we'll see. I might have to mm. tune in just to see if he does. All right, don't forget, right now is a great time to get your Inform.com subscription, 99 cents a month for your first three months. Just go to Inform.com slash subscribe to check it out. You knew I was going to say that. Right? You have I mean, to. how did that not it's get in there? a huge story. It was a big story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then join us the rest of the day on air for our newscast. The next one's at 11 this morning, then 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. We'll be back with first news tomorrow morning from 5 to 7. Until then, have a great day.